Hey, there's something you need to know about English conversations. You see, every single English conversation includes two main parts. These two things you must say in every conversation if you want to speak English fluently. And that's exactly why I created today's lesson. I want to help you understand these two things, master them and start using them so that you can be fluent in English. Are you ready? Well, then I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right. So again, every conversation includes two main things. Now, the first thing is right here, your opinion. The first part of any English conversation involves you giving your personal opinions or ideas about a specific topic. Now, the second part is your personal experience. The second part of any English conversation involves you giving your personal experience related to a specific topic. Now you'll notice for both of these parts, they're all related. They're both related to the topic you are discussing in the conversation, but these two things must be used in every English conversation, your opinion and your personal experience. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, teacher Tiffany, that seems simple enough. However, how can I say these two things in every single English conversation? Now, you know, I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to show you actually from a real conversation, how you can include these two things in a real conversation. So I had a conversation with another teacher, a native English speaker. It was a great conversation. But a portion of that conversation involved us speaking about a certain topic. She and I, teacher Julie, you guys know her. We were talking about how you keep the lines of communication open, how you stay in contact with people when you live abroad. So what I want us to do really quickly is again, this conversation, a very short conversation in which Julie and I talk about how to still communicate with people when you are far away. So what I want to do is show you the short clip very quickly. And I want you to listen closely and see if you can hear when I give my opinion and then when I give my personal experience and also when teacher Julie gives her opinion and gives her personal experience, because these two things must be in every English conversation. So here we go. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. You know what's interesting though? And again, I think you probably have recognized this as well, being overseas and having a lot of your close friends back at home, even with the time difference and like not being able to talk on the phone for the individuals that do take the time to either respond to your audio messages or like keep that like communication open, yeah. it really does make a difference. I know like one of my friends, she and I, we were close prior to me going to Korea but we got even closer during my time in Korea because she kept like communicating. So it wasn't like, oh, you're gone. See you when you get back. It was like, no, no, even though you're gone, I still want to communicate with you. So yeah. the people I stayed in contact with, like we got even closer. So yeah, I think it, the messages do make a difference too. That's, that's surprising because I think it's quite easy to like drift apart from people yes. uh, when you're farther apart and like to keep the lines of communication open and communicate even more like that's rare. I'm in contact with people, but it's like on Facebook, on Instagram, and there's some friends I have on WhatsApp and I, I speak with them, but um, I think that, yeah, our communication has decreased, honestly. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's really nice that you had that experience with your friend. Cause yeah, it's yeah. uncommon. It's rare. All right. So you see again, short clip from our conversation, but within that short clip, a little bit over one minute, I gave my opinion and I gave my personal experience and Julie did the same. So let me break it down. Let me show you exactly what happened in the conversation. And there were also some new words and expressions that I want to explain and teach you. So let's jump back to my screen. And again, I want to show you what happened at the beginning of the conversation. Here we go. So the first part, giving my opinion and details. This is what I said in the beginning. At the beginning, I said, you know, what's interesting though. And again, I think you probably have recognized this as well. Being overseas and having a lot of your close friends 
back at home. Even with the time difference and not being able to talk on the phone, for the individuals that do take the time to either respond to your audio messages or keep that communication open, it really does make a difference. Now, this is the exact dialogue, exactly what I said during the conversation at the very beginning. So again, you can practice by reading through it and maybe listening to this part again to practice your pronunciation. But I started off by giving my opinion but there are two expressions I want to explain to you really quickly, all right? Time difference. Now, time difference refers to the difference in standard time between places in different time zones. So for example, let's pause really quickly. I live in Maryland. I'm in America on the East Coast. But when I lived in South Korea, the time was different. Korea was about 13 or 14 hours ahead of my hometown. So someone could have asked me, Hey Tiff, what's the time difference? And again, they're just asking me what time is it there? What time is it here? And what's the difference? So we say time difference in English. Now let's see an example sentence using this expression. Here we go. What's the time difference between Japan and New York? All right. So what I want you to do actually in the comment section, I want you to be active. What's the time difference between mm and mm? just write that. I want you to practice using this pattern. So right now in the comment section, write your own question, right? What's the time difference between pick a location and pick another location. All right. Good job. You can do it. Put it in the comment section. All right. So time difference. Now, I also said something else. I said, make a difference. Now, make a difference means having a significant effect on a person or situation. So let's say, for example, my family, we are very, very close. I love my family so much. So what my family thinks, my parents' opinions, my sister's opinions, literally affect me. So your opinion, if I'm speaking to my mom or my father, Hey, your opinion makes a difference. It means it has an effect on me. It has an effect on what I'm doing. So we say makes a difference in English. Now let's see an example sentence. Here we go. The scholarship fund made a difference in a lot of people's lives. So you see right there made a difference is used, right? So again, we're looking at the first part where I was talking. And remember, there are two things you must say in every conversation. The first being your opinion. So I gave my opinion right here. I said, hey, you know, it's interesting. Um, usually, you know, you have a lot of close friends back at home. But with the time difference for those that actually do stay in contact, it does make a difference. So I'm giving my opinion. Hey, we may be far away. But if you still make an effort to communicate with me, Hey, that's going to make a difference. That is my opinion. So really quickly, I want us to listen just to that short part one more time. So you can hear when I gave my opinion. So pay a clip, pay close attention. Here we go. You know, what's interesting though. And again, I think you probably have recognized this as well, being overseas and having a lot of your close friends back at home. Even with the time difference and like not being able to talk on the phone for the individuals that do take the time to either respond to your audio messages or like keep that like communication open, yeah. it really does make a difference. Okay. So you see what happened, right? We went over the dialogue, what I said, but I gave my opinion. That's the very first part of any conversation. Now what's part two? Yeah, you got it. Exactly. Part two is now telling my personal experience. Now, did I do that? You know, I did. So let's check it out. Let's see how I talked about my experience in relation to the topic we were discussing. So let's go back to my screen and check this out. Here we go. So here we go. I, we watched clip number one. Now giving my personal experience, it really does make a difference. I know one of my friends, here we go. I'm starting. She and I, 
We were close prior to me going to Korea, but we got even closer during my time in Korea because she kept communicating. You see how I immediately went into my personal experience, right? Talking about my friend and what happened. Let's continue. So it wasn't like, oh, you're gone. See you when you get back. It was like, no, no, even though you're gone, I still want to communicate with you. So the people I stayed in contact with, we got even closer. So yeah, I think it, the messages do make a difference too. So again, I already gave my opinion, part one. I said my opinion, and now I'm giving my personal experience about one of my friends, right? And I'll tell you a story during story time about my friend, all right? So stay here, don't go anywhere, it's at the end, all right? So in this part, I did use an expression or a pattern. Prior to, this is a vocabulary word. Now, prior to just means before a particular time or event, all right? So for example, I'm recording this lesson for you, right? But prior to recording this lesson, I ate an amazing breakfast, right? I had potatoes, I had some fruit, I had avocado. It was delicious. So I can say right before this event, right before this time of recording this video, I ate a really good breakfast. So prior to recording, I ate a really good breakfast. So we say prior to in English. Now let's see another example sentence. Here we go. Make sure all revisions are approved by the author prior to publication. All right. So now again, I told a personal experience. So let's go back and check out just that portion of the conversation, all right? Let's go to that portion of the conversation and see how it sounds. Here we go. It really does make a difference. I know like one of my friends, she and I, we were close prior to me going to Korea, but we got even closer during my time in Korea because she kept like communicating. So it wasn't like, oh, you're gone. See you when you get back. It was like, no, no, even though you're gone, I still want to communicate with you. So yeah. the people I stayed in contact with, like we got even closer. So yeah, I think it, the messages do make a difference too. All right. So you see what happened, right? You heard, you understood, you even understood the words I used prior to. Again, I gave my opinion. Then I gave my personal experience. Now we're going to hear what Julie did as well. But you see, there is one problem. I want to show you what this problem is. Again, you as a student, you want to speak English fluently. You also want to be able to, just like me, say these two things in a conversation. But here's the problem. It's hard for you to think about and practice talking about your personal experiences. Many of my students when I was in South Korea had this trouble. They didn't know how to organize their thoughts. They didn't know how to find experiences that would connect to the conversation. Here's the thing. In order to do this, you must practice. And this brings us to today's sponsor. That's right. Cambly is sponsoring today's lesson. And you all know how much I love working with Cambly. Cambly has tutors from all around the world. But this is why I'm bringing up Cambly right now. Because in order to practice, in order to figure out ways of connecting your personal experiences with conversation topics, you need a teacher. You need someone that's a native English speaker to practice with. And Cambly has just the people you need. Now, let me show you something very special about Cambly. Here we go. Cambly, all their lessons are recorded. So when you have a class, you can watch them over and over again. They have tutors from the USA, Canada, Australia, and the UK. Their tutors are available literally 24-7. Their tutors provide one-on-one -on -one private English lessons. You heard me right. One-on-one -on -one private lessons. So you can practice what you're learning right now in this video. But it doesn't stop there. You see, they also offer tutors specifically trained to help you speak English fluently. Now, Cambly and I, we've worked together many different times and they said, Tiffany, we want to help your students. So two things they want to give you. First, a free 10 minute lesson. The link is in the description. You can get your free 10 minute lesson to practice. 
and they want to give you 40% off any 12 month plan. You heard me right. 40% off of any 12 month plan. So you can start putting into practice what you're learning right now, saying these two things and you can practice with your tutor. So I want to say Cambly, thank you so much for caring about students, for caring about English learners. And for you as a student, I hope you take advantage of this amazing offer by clicking the link in the description. All right. Again, thank you so much, Cambly. All right. So again, guys, we're learning the two parts that you must say in any English conversation, your opinion and also your personal experience. So what about Julie? How did Julie respond after I said my opinion and gave my experience? Well, let's go and check out what Julie did. Here we go. So now Julie is going to give her opinion and some details. So here we go. This is what Julie said. That's surprising because I think it's quite easy to like drift apart from people when you are farther apart and like to keep the lines of communication open and communicate even more like that's rare. So again, you see Julie is now responding to what I said. And in Julie's opinion, it's quite rare. It's easy for people to drift apart when they live farther apart. So again, Julie, what did she do? The first thing she said her opinion. I'm telling you, this is a part of every single English conversation. First, giving your opinion. Now I want to explain something to you. She said drift apart. Now drift apart means to slowly cease or stop being close to or friends with someone or to lose personal contact over time. This is a phrasal verb. All right. So maybe you had a friend that you were really close to when you were in high school or when you were in elementary school, but over time, you stopped contacting her or him. So you drifted apart. Makes sense, right? All right. Now here's an example sentence for you. All right. The two women who had been friends since school drifted apart after they started work. All right. Now the second one is the lines of communication open. So in English, we say, keep the lines of communication open. And this just means a means by which information may be transmitted from one person to another. So keeping the lines of communication open, meaning, Hey, I'm always available. You can contact me. You can text me. You can message me. This is saying I'm keeping the lines of communication open. If you want to contact me, you can, I'll be available for you. Right? So let's see the example sentence. Here we go. The couple made an agreement to always keep the lines of communication open. All right. So again, they made a commitment to never cut each other off. They would always be available to talk. All right. So again, Julie gave her opinion about being far away and she said, oh man, usually people drift apart. So now let's check this out. Let's listen to what Julie said. Here we go. Just that portion of the conversation. Here we go. That's surprising because I think it's quite easy to like drift apart from people yes. uh, when you're farther apart and like to keep the lines of communication open and communicate even more like that's rare. All right. So you heard her, right? She said, it's very rare. It's hard to keep the lines of communication open because in her opinion, People usually drift apart. You're seeing, you're seeing now, right? These two parts are in every conversation. So that means if Julie just gave her opinion, the next thing she must do is what? Exactly. Julie must now give her personal experience. So let's see if that actually happened in the conversation. All right. So Julie giving her personal experience. Here's what Julie said. I'm in contact with people, but it's like on Facebook, on Instagram, and there are some friends I have on WhatsApp and I speak with them. Julie gave her personal experience. How does she stay in contact with her friends? She mentioned what? Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. She said her personal experience 
right after she gave her opinion. Again, you must say these two things in every English conversation. This is how you speak English fluently. So again, she mentioned Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. So let's watch this clip. Let's go back and see very quickly just this part of the conversation when Julie said quickly her personal experience. So here we go. Like that's rare. I'm in contact with people, but it's like on Facebook, on Instagram, and there's some friends I have on WhatsApp and I, I speak with them. Okay, you heard it, right? It was very quick. WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and I stay in contact with them. She said her personal experience. So now I gave my opinion and I also gave my personal experience. Julie gave her opinion and her personal experience. Now, what happens at the end of a conversation? Well, at the end of a conversation, there has to be a wrap up. Now, did that happen during this short conversation? At the end, was there a wrap up? Yes, there was. Here we go. So there must be a summary and Julie wraps up that part of the conversation. Here's what she says. But I think that, yeah, our communication has decreased honestly. So that's really nice that you had that experience with your friend. Cause yeah, it's uncommon, it's rare. So what did she do? She brought it right back to what I said at the beginning. She said, yeah, you know, it's uncommon. It's not really common that people will stay in contact, but it's nice, Tiffany, that you're still able to stay in contact with your friends and you were still able to stay in contact with them when you were in Korea. She wrapped up the conversation. I gave my opinion, my experience. She gave her opinion, her experience, and wrapped it up. Now there's a word she used though. She used the word rare. Now rare just means not occurring very often, seldom occurring or found. Now an example sentence is the museum is full of rare and precious treasures. So again, it's just referring to things that you may not see all the time or things that don't really happen all the time. In English, we say rare. Good job. So again, let's check out this short part of the conversation that happened at the end and see how it sounds. But um, I think that, yeah, our communication has decreased, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's really nice that you had that experience with your friend because, yeah, it's yeah. uncommon. It's rare. All right. She said, yeah, it's uncommon. It's rare. So you heard her wrap up the conversation. Now, this video clip was short, this part of the conversation, but in this one minute conversation, you still heard the two things that are always included in every English conversation. So one more time, what's the first thing? The first thing again is your opinion. And the second thing is your personal experience. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Never forget, say these two things in every English conversation your opinion, and your personal experience. I'm teacher Tiffany. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember, don't forget to get your gift, to get your free 10-minute lesson or that 40% off coupon from Cambly, today's sponsor, by clicking the link in the description. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you next week. But as always, remember to speak English. Do, 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 do. You still there? You know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. So for today's story, I want to tell you something about my weekend. This happened a few days ago. One of my closest friends, she's actually one of my best friends, she had a birthday party. Now, this is gonna show you something about my friend's personality. So my friend had this huge birthday party, right? She had a really big milestone birthday and it was gonna be outside. So the decorations were beautiful. Now my friend, she had planned to wear an amazing outfit, but she also asked us, myself and two of her other friends, to practice a dance. She said, Tiff, 
I want you guys to learn this dance so that when I come out, we can immediately start doing the dance together. So myself and my two other friends said, okay, we got your back. We'll do it. So again, this happened on Sunday. So on, she asked me to learn the dance. And then on Sunday morning, I said, let me make sure I know this dance before we get to the party. So I opened the link that she sent me that had the dance and the dances, it was kind of short, but had a, quite a few steps to it. Now I assumed it was going to just kind of be like, you know, real simple, maybe a little left to the right, maybe, you know, a little two step or something. So when I opened the link, when I clicked on the link, it was a little bit more than I anticipated. There was a guy in a stu dance studio teaching these students the steps. So I was following him. I was following the YouTube video that taught the lesson, like taught the dance. So as I'm in my room practicing the dance, there was a lot of stepping on the side, then crisscross, then slide to the left, slide to the right, spin out, spin to the left. After five minutes, I was out of breath. Now, I have a lot of energy, but I was out of breath. And I sat on my bed and I said, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen when I get out there. So anyways, fast forward, we come to now the party. So I'm there. My other two friends are there and a lot of other people are there. So we're waiting for my friend to come out her birthday. She's got really nice dress on and the music comes on. So me and the other two ladies are like, okay, it's about to be our time. Now I have my camera to record my friend. So my friend comes out and she's, you know, kind of jamming to the music or whatever. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just record because she wants to dance. But then she looked at us. She said, let's do it. So we said, okay. So we got behind her and we started doing the steps. Now, the only thing is there were four of us, right? All four of us were doing different steps. <laughs> Now, it wasn't that we were doing the wrong steps. Somebody had watched a different video. They have a different dance for the song. But when I say we were all happy, man. So we were all doing the dance. Everybody else joined in and we were doing the dance. But then the sky opened up and it started pouring down rain. So the dance got cut short and we all walked underneath my friend's, um, her deck. We're thinking, hey, it'll be like a five minute rain because it's the summertime. But that wasn't the case. The rain kept coming. Now, here's what I wanted to tell you about my friend. One thing that I love about my friend is she rolls with the punches. Now, rolling with the punches means something may happen that's unexpected, but instead of letting it bother you, you just keep pushing forward and you don't stress. And that's exactly how my friend is. Think about this. Oh, my friend turned 50. So this is a very important birthday. She'd been planning it for months. And the moment she came out, a few minutes after it started pouring down rain, it rained on all the decorations and other people would have burst out in tears and been so worried and, and anxious. But my friend said, all right, let's just take it inside. And everybody went inside and it ended up being an amazing birthday, an amazing time. But I really value my friend for being able to let things roll off of her back, rolling with the punches and still being able to have a great time, even when bad things happen. So uh, we have that kind of in common. You just kind of figure things out and roll with it. But my friend is very special to me. Her name is Monica. Monica, if you watch this video, I'm so glad you had a great birthday. But yes, yeah, sometimes you have to just roll with the punches and go with the flow. Now, that was my personal experience. My opinion was, yes, I think that it's good to roll with the punches. You see how I put that in there, right? <laughs> now, I hope you have a friend like that as well that is really easy going. Um, don't forget to make your sentence and put it in the comment section. I want to see you guys practice. And I hope you enjoyed this story about my friend's birthday party. I will see you all next week. Have an awesome week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>